So good morning. Let's do a quick demo on how to use ChidHub for your classes for your Python and C++ intro to programming. So here I am on the ChidHub page. You should have already created your own account. You can see what your account is by looking here, or you could just even look over there. And if you click your account, it'll give you an overview of what you're doing, what you're working on, who you, who's following you, um, what repositories you have. So for the course that we're taking this semester, what you probably want to do is create a new repository. And a repository is just like a directory, but in the cloud. We can think of it as being in the cloud here for GitHub. So I could click here and say, let's make a new repository. And then, I should turn off my alerts there. And then let's call this, for example, if I'm in the TC1014 class, let's call that TC1014. You can call it whatever you want, but this is my stuff for Ken's class, or whatever you want to call it. That's your um, choice in the description, and it's optional. You're going to want to keep it public unless you want to give money to GitHub and have private repositories. Um, and uh, you might want to initialize this with a readme just for fun, and then you'll actually have one file in there. Uh, this uh, JitIgnore, you probably want to talk about it later but you can have it ignore stuff for say C++ or whatever a common language is. But so I'm actually, um, this is a setup repository for TC1014, which would be Python. So it would make sense for me to say, uh, ignore Python stuff. Um, it's basically to avoid including stuff you don't want to. You can create a license on this. You can put no license on it or any other license you want on your stuff. The idea is if you're using GitHub for free, you're providing um, a resource for the community to look at your stuff that's in GitHub. So let's get this started. I'll hit Create Repository. And there it goes. It creates it. Notice that there's a JitIgnore file here, like I mentioned on the previous page. And there's that readme. That readme just has this content here. It actually, it's a special file where it always views this on your page. So this is your repository. We only have one commit. We have a branch. Don't worry about branches and releases yet. And only one contributor, me, Ken W. Bauer. All right, so how do we get from here to having the files on our computer and then get the files from our computer back up to here in the cloud? So this is how we're going to do it. You'll notice there is a URL for your um, your repository. You can double click, you can just click this and say copy that URL to the keyboard. All right. So now what we want to do is install a client. Now you can either use the command line like the link I gave you um, in the other homework assignments or you could use a GUI client. Those are the two options. So I'll start with a GUI client. I'll do another video about uh, about the text mode of using JIT. So if you Google you'll find a page like this. It says there's all sorts of clients for Mac, for Windows, for Linux. If you um, go to the URL that it shows. This is the GitHub for Mac. There's also actually windows.github.com, which is the GitHub client for Windows. They're very similar, but I'm going to show you Mac right now. So I download this and run it, and then I, I get it going. I'm going to run it now. I actually deleted all my configuration so I could you could sh see what I'm doing here on, on a basic installation. And so I'm here. I'm in GitHub. I'm going to check out. You can add a repository from a local directory or you can create a new repository or what I want to do is I want to clone a repository which means take it from GitHub the site and bring it down to my machine but it says hey look you're not logged in you better log in right now so I'm gonna log in my login for GitHub is KW Bauer my password is here's the secret um, I can just use my last hash and I'll say let's copy the password for that and that way you don't have to look at my password and I'll sign in. I actually have two-factor authentication usually configured. You should probably do that too, but I turned that off for this demo. So now I'm actually logged into GitHub. It knows who I am. There's some other configuration here that you can set for the configuration of GitHub, but it's all fine. What's my config, my name, what is my email? That's all set up. So now I should be able to say add a cloned repository and it actually automatically connects to GitHub because this is a GitHub client and says which thing would you like to clone so what was it called oh there it is TC1014 I've got various other projects you might just have the one and I'm gonna say clone it and it's gonna ask me which this is gonna be a directory so this is a directory 
the same name as the project. Where do you want to put this directory? Now I'm kind of organized or OCD and I like to put my stuff all in a devel directory under my home directory. So that's what I'm going to do. I chose to put it under devel and it's going to create this as TC1014. You could change that, but don't bother. And there it goes. It cloned it. So now we'll notice there's an interface here saying there's there's no uncommitted changes, there's nothing that's changed. Um, so we could there's no unsync commits, everything's good. This client is our push to the cloud and pull to our computer. So let's just simulate Let's say I have a Python file here. Look, there's a hello.py Python file. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it into that directory. Okay, there's a directory, there's a readme. And I'm just going to paste that over there. So now I have a hello Python file. We could even open this in our editor, Atom. There it is print hola mundo, print Python rocks. That's there. Actually, Atom's pretty smart because it actually knows that this is inside a. Um, a GitHub repository. So anyway, let's go back to this client. Notice that it sees that this hello.python is new. And we could go, oh, let's select all the new stuff. And we're going to commit it. Or, and this is the option, you can say commit and sync or just commit. Commit makes versions that are local on your own computer. So if something happened, you screwed up your code, you can go back in time to one version previous or two even. Um, commit and sync, the sync part is send my changes to the cloud to GitHub site and pull any changes that happen to be committed probably by someone else back to my computer as well. So what I'm going to say is, oh, okay, added that hello.py and then uh, that's a brief description. I could do a big complicated description here. So um, this is the awesome super hello.py to um, show my mastery number. Hmm, what mastery was that? I think that was number one, but maybe I'm wrong. I could change that later. Um, and then I'll sync. So what I can do here is hit commit and sync. Now watch the magic. Let's go back to that site. Uh, where were we? We're GitHub. There we are. GitHub. There's only JitIgnore. I'll refresh this to make sure I'm telling the truth. There's only two files here, right? Okay, let's go to the client. We're going to hit that commit and sync button. I'm already logged into the client, it knows who I am, it trusts me, and it sends it up to the web. Now everything's cool, everything's good, there's no unsynced commits. If we reload this page over here, voila, there's the hello.py, it's right there. And it's even got that brief comment. And if I click on this, I can see the detail comment. It tells me when it was committed, we'll notice that this has changed, that we have two different commits where things came in um, from the outside to the inside. And if we click on this file, We'll notice it actually has our content of our file. We could click raw here to get a raw view of this and, and download it, um, or anything else you want to do uh, with this file. Notice the URL, the thing up here in the URL bar here. If I copied that, I could go to my known page. So let's go to uh, kenbauer.withknown.com, which redirects to known.kenbauer.me, if I remember correctly. Yes, because I have a pro version of with known. And I can make a new post and say, here is my stuff for uh, mastery01, or whatever I want to write. And I could say, check out my code over on, oh, I can't spell today, over on GitHub. Definitely can't spell today. I think I need more coffee. Hold on. Good. Okay. And then I copy paste that URL. Now, if I commit this and I publish it, there it is. It's out on the web in the public. Everybody can see this now. It created a a page, which is Cam Bauer, uh It's known 2015. Here's my stuff for Mastery Zero One. This URL shows whatever I wrote on my blog and it links and if I click on that link there it is anybody on the internet could see this link if you don't believe me let's copy paste that link open up a private window in Firefox so I'm not logged into anything and I go to that link in GitHub and there's the code anybody in the world can see it I'm not signed in it's perfectly visible so we can share our code with everybody else in the world So a lot of other cool stuff with GitHub you're definitely going to use JIT uh, whether it's on GitHub or privately hosted 
in lots of your projects in, in your degree programs, whether you're a computing major or not a computing major, this is a great system for sharing and collaborating any kind of files. So uh, that's all for today, and I'll just hit the stop recording button. Have an awesome week.